Ben Seraph has wasted no time at all announcing himself as one of the most intriguing point guard prospects in the 2025 NBA draft. After a fantastic showing with Israel and FIBA competition over the summer, Seraph has gone off to a scorching start with Ulm. While Seraph has a ton of potential and upside on the defensive end, given his size, the work rate, and the, de the defensive playmaking that we've seen from him, the real day one ready skill it comes on the offensive end, and that's going to be the focus of this video. We're going to take a look at how Seraph is consistently creating for teammates out of the pick and roll, out of straight drives, and a myriad of ways finding shooters in the opposite corner, cutters, lobs, dump offs, whatever you want, Seraph has given it to us. We're also going to take a look at his scoring versatility and the ease in which he's getting to his jumper, how it looks comfortable off ball, and how he's even showing some ability to play in more of an off ball role, shooting off the catch and cutting. Seraph is really, really fascinating, and the fact that he's gotten off to this hot of a start this quickly is a real testament to his talent, his upside, and the overall quality of the 2025 NBA draft class. I'm Tyler Metcalf. Welcome to Film School. Let's dive in. So the bulk of Seraph's playmaking um, has so far has come out of drive and kick, drive and dump uh, situations, especially out of the pick and roll. And while he's a good ball handler, I wouldn't necessarily classify him as a overly dynamic one. Um, instead, he's really quick. He's really good at changing speeds and utilizing his strength and his um, his frame to hold off defenders. And instead of really over overtly flashy stuff, it's really shifty. It's crisp crossovers. And we get a kind of a taste of this here. So as Seraph brings the ball across half court, Ulm is going to set a little pin down here. And uh, this off ball guard is going to come set a screen for Seraph. Seraph ca catches his defender really playing up high on him. Uh, trying to cheat over a little bit, square stance this far out, and instead of waiting for the screen, Seraph just crosses him over, attacks that momentum. As we can see, he's the defender's kind of already up, trying to cheat over the screen, and on the wing, you don't want to do that, obviously, because you leave yourself vulnerable to a crossover like that. So again, this is the type of ball handling that we're seeing from Seraph, where that's really crisp, and it's decisive and it's effective. It's not there. There's no wasted movements really with his handle. So crosses him over. And from here, now that his defender is out of the play, he has all of this space in the middle of the floor to attack to or to attack, which signals to him that someone's going to have to collapse on him as he drives. He now knows that both opposite defenders or wing defenders are kind of crashing in on him and but more importantly the low man is all the way in the lane to try and take away this drive which means that his teammate is wide open in the corner against his momentum Seraph does an awesome job of whipping this pass out with his strong hand a little backhand whip pass through traffic ton of pace on it right in the shooting pocket the accuracy on that is absolutely fantastic in an nba context this shot is probably going up um instead his teammate still does a really good job here of getting a quality look a little shot fake gets the, draws the hard close out he attacks baseline gets the bucket but all of this is set up because seraph identifies that his defender is cheating a little bit and then that that crispness and the efficiency on the crossover and the kick out fantastic on this one we get another kind of fun example of the efficiency of Seraph's handle how he can just kind of toy and manipulate defenders in the pick and roll and just set up a teammate for a really wide open look so as he gets the ball um, immediately pushes and is picked up full court so from here from the start Seraph already has his defender 
in kind of chase and recover mode. And Seraph knows that he has the ability and the opportunity to kind of just toy with him and dictate his momentum however he sees, sees fit. And that's exactly what he does throughout this play. As he comes off the screen, his defender gets back over, drop defender kind of steps, little dribble move here. And I like how just simple it is. It's crisp. It's decisive. Um, and there, again, there's no wasted movement with it. It's not overtly flashy, but that the change of pace in a tight area the with his movement lulling his defender to sleep um, and exploding a couple steps at a time really toys with both these defenders and makes them kind of second guess and expose um, their vulnerability in terms of trying to defend this set or this kind of makeshift action. Um, so as he comes off the screen, a little crossover and now his defender thinks he's back in position and just explodes into this spin move to attack this space, which now the drop defender now has to re-engage with Seraph to take away this drive. If he doesn't, if he just stays back out on the shooter, Seraph's at the rim, easy peasy. Defender has to help here. Seraph's initial defender is now yet again in kind of chase and recover mode, and Seraph just sets up his teammate, wide open shot, uh, again, NBA context, maybe this the, probably a little better chance of this going in, especially if he's playing with a stretch five, stretch four, whatever. But this is a fantastic look, and it all comes out of Seraph's ability to just recognize the opportunity for him to toy with this defender and just do it throughout a possession. A lot of Seraph's ability to find open shooters um, on the perimeter comes from kind of driving kick, uh, pick and pop type situations, but also just from the top of the key. If he spots the defender kind of cheating over or an extra step or two um, in one direction, he's able to manipulate that and counter it from the top of the key as well. So from here, pick and roll, defender kind of goes under, and this provides Seraph with just an even better view of the weak side. He's already 6'5 and an awesome passer. You don't need to be giving him extra opportunities to find teammates. Um, so this is a really wide open passing window. Since things kind of get mucked up here on the roll, the roller has his defender on his back. So the low man has both feet in the lane to try and take away that roll. Seraph is eyeing that. He's initially looking at uh, Isaiah Roby here on the roll. He has his hand up, but Seraph sees the low man cheating over. Uh, but low man's kind of in doing what he's supposed to be doing, especially when his teammate is opposite rim side of his man. Um, if this defender is instead having both feet or even one foot outside the paint, that leaves Roby even more space, and Seraph's probably throwing a little lob over the top, set him up for an easy layup. Instead, he sees that the low man fully committed and that Noah Senge is in the corner, eagerly awaiting the skip pass. Without hesitation, Seraph live dribble. It is a strong hand. He is a lefty, um, but live dribble, no wasted motion. If he secures this with two hands, it gives the defender, you know, that extra half step to go into recovery mode. De whips it across. Good catch and adjustment by Asenge. And he's able to rise up, knock down that corner three in rhythm. And it's just a testament to the vision, the passing accuracy, and the pace that Seraph's able to put on that pass. The other aspect that makes Seraph's playmaking so dangerous and dynamic is that his interior passing is also really really strong he's not exclusively looking for shooters um, when he gets downhill and in the paint he's also looking to attract defenders and find cutters or rollers out of pocket passes and all that kind of stuff as well so as the ball kind of swings up to him at the top here screen's coming he ignores it because he catches his defender uh, square stance he's just going to rip through and drive because he also sees that the help defender the way they've been playing him and especially in the pick and roll all game was kind of playing at the level a little bit more 
and he sees that this help defender is playing in chase. He's not dropping, so Seraph knows that this paint is going to be vacated because the opposing center is coming all the way out with the screener. Seraph wastes no time, just rips through, uses his size and uh, athleticism to just immediately get downhill. Since he's now attacking all this space, he's attracted this the low man who now has to rotate over to take away the drive. And instead of camping out in the corner, which Asenge very easily could have here, um, but he was already kind of on the block after that roll. Um, so he wasn't out there to begin with. So he's already kind of in the dunker spot. So he does a great job of just slipping in baseline behind his defender, who's now caught in no man's land. Seraph sees it. That was a perfect lob, makes it life incredibly easy for Asenge here, and that's the easiest two points he may get all season. So just one more time, just it's simple, it's decisive, and incredibly effective. This one I absolutely love from Seraph because it really shows his composure under pressure and his ability to not only read but also manipulate weak side and help defenders as well. So... From the start here, just a bit of window dressing, a uh, little handoff, all of it to just set up a side pick and roll. And as Seraph comes off the screen, you know, he immediately sees that the drop defenders or the help defender is playing at the level here. So he's going to string this out. And he's immediately looking for the roller here. As he gets his eyes and kind of gets to where he wants and is able to spot the roller he sees that his man is kind of lost in no man's land. He never really switched. He didn't recover. He's basically out of the play. So what Seraph is trying to identify and manipulate here is this weak side defender and this help defender on the low block. Um, from here, Seraph can see that this weak side defender is out of the play. He's staying home on the corner shooter, just Indian dress up. Not a bad choice. Um, you know, he obviously needs to kind of ro rotate down here a little more, but Jessup is a lethal shooter, so you kind of get it. But what Seraph needs to do now that this man, that he's identified that this weak side defender is out of the play, is get rid of this guy. And what he does here is glances over a little bit to his teammate in the corner, which sends that defender reeling. Uh, he's trying to kick back out to the corner to intercept that because that's where Seraph's eyes went but the ball goes to the roller sets him up perfectly the ball is exactly where it needs to be it's Seraph puts it in a spot where the roller is able to catch it shield it from the now rotating weak side defender he's able to go up easy layup just a, a really fun example of Seraph's manipulation of weak side defenders and ability to kind of read and process the situation very, very quickly. What's really encouraging about Sarah's offensive game um, that we haven't seen from a lot of kind of point guards, his size is his ability to play off ball as well as on ball. Um, so at 6'5", you want a little bit more versatility from a lot of these kind of point guards because you can theoretically play them at the two or more of an off-ball role or with another kind of on-ball creator. And in the past, we've seen some of those guys really struggle and not know what to do when playing off-ball as much. But Seraph has been really comfortable. We'll get into some of the scoring stuff too. But we can also see, in this example, how he's able to utilize his playmaking in an off-ball role to still create for teammates. So early offense, ball kicks to him, and... Seraph immediately sees that his defender is closing out, poor angle, he has his positioning all wrong, and is giving up the baseline, ton of space for Seraph to attack to, freezes him, crosses over, attacks with his right, and yet again, attracts the weak side rotation, which, very common theme throughout this entire video so far, is Seraph really consistently and effortlessly getting pain touches and forcing those weak side rotations, and then being able to counter it. So from here, Seraph is a pretty much purely below the rim finisher uh, to this point, which is kind of a bummer at his size, but he knows that he's not going to be able to sky and finish over this guy. So instead, he kills his momentum, 
and is looking for his teammates. He knows that this weak side defender is taking away the corner shooter. Um, so he's looking between him and him, and he just has to manipulate this help defender. Seraph stares down the shooter at the top of the key, which moves that defender just two steps. Let's see, stares him down. Defender moves to try and cut off that passing lane. Instead, Seraph dumps it off to Noah Senge, who's cutting from the opposite wing, and he gets the big poster dunk. So even though he's in an off-ball role, he's still able to utilize his playmaking and um, manipulation abilities to create four teammates after collapsing a defense. Really just unselfish play all around. Something I'm really intrigued to keep an eye on going forward um, is Seraph's kind of ball security and predetermined um, attacks going forward. So we've so far we've seen a ton. It, the overwhelming majority of his playmaking and his play has been so positive. But if we're nitpicking, and you know it's early, so why not? It's just something to keep an eye on going forward. Is that a lot of his kind of attacks and passes? have been a bit predetermined. Um, so just something to keep an eye on. So here, play starts off a little clumsily, not great, but teammate bails him out. And from here, you would expect Seraph, based on everything we've seen and everything he's shown in the last however many months, make this kick out. This is an easy read, wide open corner shooter. Defender has rotated all the way over to take away this drive. Instead, Seraph is just kind of dead set on going to the rim, leaves the ball exposed. Defender makes a really nice dig here to poke it loose, but that ball should be coming out way before, right here. Right here, that pass is, should be made. He takes another couple steps. Defender pokes it out. Uh, it, it's a very easily avoidable turnover. I, you know, here... He trips, he loses his footing. If that ends up in a turnover, okay, it happens. Uh, but after his teammate bails him out, and now it's a four-on-three situation here, this is an opportunity for Seraph to set up his teammate for a wide-open corner three. A rare miss by him, but it's something to keep an eye on going forward where some of his passes and turnovers have been because he's predetermined what he wants to do and is just a touch slow to kind of react and improvise so not a red flag necessarily but just something for us to keep an eye on going forward in recent years the kind of one of the common themes with these jumbo point guards um, especially international ones has been that they're awesome at playmaking but the shot hasn't really been there so far that hasn't been the case with Seraph at all. The shot has looked really good. He's launched, He's been very comfortable from three uh, in the mid-range, pulling up, shooting off the catch. It's really, really encouraging that if the shooting all year is going to be very real and this versatile and this effective to pair with his playmaking, it could get scary with how high his stock could rise. So this is just a really standard high pick and roll. Um, and it's something that we see NBA point guards run all the time. It's replicable. And we can see throughout how comfortable Seraph is getting his own look here. So his defender initially goes way under and is able to recover. Cool. Immediately re rescreen, get back into it, attack downhill. Uh, Sarah, this time Seraph's defender goes over and does a pretty good job of kind of staying attached to him. Seraph, though, is unde undeterred. Uh, he's not really affected by the high pressure. And what he's doing right now is trying to put his, his man in jail while reading this weak side defender, who he sees only has one foot in the paint. That passing lane isn't there, so a kick out isn't really feasible at this point. Additionally, his man hasn't really begun to roll yet and drop defenders in great position. So Seraph is just kind of, all right, let's keep, keep the dribble alive and see what we can create here. Now that he has his defender a little off balance and in, in jail, this is where Seraph's size and strength really come into play and really are kind of fortuitous for him going forward. 
little little push off nothing egregious uh steps back effortlessly smoothly rises up knocks down that elbow jumper this is stuff that we see from nba point guards and on ball creators all the time it's smooth it's consistent it's effective and he's incredibly comfortable with it on this one we just again just see the ease and the comfort level of serif shooting and scoring in the mid-range um, especially out of the pick and roll and it's that same kind of just little herky-jerky uh, quick change of pace um, and direction in tight spaces that's smooth it's incredibly effective and you know technically kind of comes in an off-ball roll a uh, little second side creator here later in the shot clock so he knows that he doesn't have a ton of time to really kind of play around with stuff gets the screen and being that far out with his defender going over drop coverage he knows that there's going to be a lot of space here because his man's in chase and recover mode uh strong side defender can't help off and his roller is going to eventually drag the drop defender back into the middle of the floor a, li a little bit more so a little hesitation explodes into this little pocket rises up beats his defender off the floor relatively open look knocks it down incredibly smooth something that can be replicated over and over again and we continue to see it from him what's so encouraging about serif's shooting is how consistent and comfortable his mechanics look in all areas of the floor so this one is just kind of a, a standard getting a little late in the shot clock and he just decides to go to work nothing crazy um but just kind of lulls his defender to sleep makes him shift his feet around a little jab step to create just a couple more inches of space defender does a good job of getting a decent contest here but serif's mechanics are really fluid really consistent and he just knocks down that pull-up jumper nothing crazy but the mechanics whether it's in the mid-range or from outside look the exact same i mentioned earlier serif's ability to play on or off ball and we we see we've seen that in his shooting as well so earlier we saw him attack a closeout um and create for a cutter by attacking the rim but now we're seeing why that defender closed out so aggressively on him. And if he's able to consistently knock down shots like this, playmaking opportunities like we saw earlier are going to be incredibly common. So just set up in the corner, shot ready, hands up, teammate kicks out, a little wild, not great ball placement for Seraph, but, you know, his, his teammate desperately needed uh, to get rid of it so but Seraf does a really good job here of catching adjusting quickly getting that shot or the ball back up in the, the proper position unaffected by the closeout great base rises up good follow through knocks it down it's incredibly similar mechanics to what we saw off the off or on his pull-ups um, and now he's doing it off the catch as well that's smooth it's confident it's the type of shooting and the consistency in mechanics and the confidence that we really love to see from a 6'5 point guard because he's continuing to prove that he's not just one-dimensional, that he can shoot off the bounce, play make for others, and shoot off the catch. Being able to be that outlet as a spot-up shooter as well is incredibly important. Being a reliable spot-up shooter um, in Sarah's position is really important going forward, but this type of play, when I saw this, is immediate. I just immediately fell in love because this is fantastic from him. It'd be really easy for him to just stay in the corner, but Seraf is showing that he's a willing cutter as well. And if he's able to consistently do that, and it, it just completely diversifies his off ball scoring game, his overall scoring game, and elevates his overall offensive impact. Um, so, very similar kind of situation as the previous clip where Seraph set up in the corner, but this time it's on the roll. And as the roller kind of catches the ball here, Seraph sees that his defender is totally cued in on the ball. He's ball watching and that the baseline is wide open. There is no rim protector on the floor. So instead of staying complacent and staying in the corner, Seraph shows off his 
floor awareness and his willingness to relocate and just make life easier for his teammate. Great cut. The roller does a great job of kind of adjusting, delivering a bounce pass. Seraph's defender is out of the picture here and just immediately goes up with the ball. Easy layup, but this type of activity, that type of that willingness to move off ball is so much fun and something we rarely, rarely see um, from point guards and just on ball initiators in general. Seraph's at rim finishing is going to be the I think the most intriguing aspect to keep an eye on in terms of his scoring game going forward, but there are a lot of really encouraging signs. Um, Some of the big concerns are that he almost never looks to use his right hand, and he's a very below-the-rim finisher right now, so not super vertically explosive um, and very left-hand dominant when it comes to finishing, stuff he's going to have to improve on. Um, But when he goes to his left, there are some really encouraging signs. So here aggressive uh, kind of blitz um, and dig by the help defender. And as Seraph kind of avoids that dig, he sees that the help defender is going back to the roller and that he has a ton of space to attack, which he does. And from here, he knows that or he, he has his defender in uh, chase and recover mode and that his defender's momentum, it's all going to the baseline since he's a little quicker than Seraph. Seraph doesn't force it. He doesn't try and go through his defender, um, who's done a good job of getting back between Seraph and the rim. But since his hips are totally parallel to the baseline here, he has no ability to flip it, to flip his hips, reposition himself, and adjust to a step back or any sort of deceleration by Seraph here. Seraph does a great job of elongating his strides, pushes off, and just really plants that right foot, which kills his momentum, allows him to rise up, gets rid of his initial defender, who is now sailing out of bounds, and the help defender can't get there in time. Seraph drops it in off the glass. Really fun utilization of his size, his strength, and his uh, deceleration. If you're not going to be overly explosive and the fastest guy on the floor, one of the most effective ways of getting shots inside is that is that ability to decelerate now Seraph rarely rarely ever looked to use his right hand but this was the one time that he did so I felt like I had to include it uh under pressure full court and just does a great job of fending off his defender using his size using his strength to continue to get downhill never allows his defender to get back rim side draws the foul hooks him a little bit, a a little bit of craft uh, by Seraph here, but does a good job of just kind of adjusting and going up with his right. So now he's proven, he's shown us that he can do it. He can finish with his right. Um, I just need him, I desperately need him going forward to look at his right hand a little more because way too often he was adjusting and going back to his left in those types of situations. And then finally, just one more example of Seraph's ability to get downhill explode into that open space in the middle of the floor, especially out of the pick and roll, and just finish through contact. So little f- ghost screen here, and Seraph's defender is very aggressive on him, and he does a great job of just kind of shrugging him off, getting low, exploding out of this drive, and leaving his defender behind him. Um, in previous clips, we saw him kind of utilize his playmaking in these types of situations and kick out to uh, weak side shooters. This time, since no one has yet to pick him up, he just continues to attack downhill, elevates, she protects the ball with both hands, adjusts, avoids the contact, avoids the shot blocker, finishes through the contact, shows off his touch. Just a f- nice example of his ability to immediately get downhill and then use that size, that scoring touch to finish through the contact at the rim. Ben Seraf has had about as ideal of a start to a season as you could hope for, um, especially for a teenager playing in a pro league. Going forward, it's going to be really fascinating to kind of monitor what Seraf's production continues to look like. If these numbers and the play continue to mirror what we've seen in his first two games his draft stock could get 
ridiculous. I'm not sure that there is necessarily a ceiling on it, especially if he continues to grow and improve some of the question marks that we've seen. Some of those question marks being he's very left-hand dominant right now. Um, he's willing to drive to his right, but whenever he gets to the rim, he, almost every time he was switching back over to his left to finish there, he has to start implementing some right-hand finishes around the rim. It doesn't have to be every time, but we need to see steps in the right direction going forward. Additionally, is the shooting going to continue looking this smooth and comfortable and effective? I kind of believe it will because it looks incredibly seamless for him right now. That, uh, that combination of on-ball and off-ball scoring paired with his playmaking makes him so fascinating going forward. Now, I know we only focused on the offense in this video, and the defense is something I really want to monitor as well going forward. The pluses for Seraph are that he's been a fantastic defensive playmaker, and at his size, at 6'5", his room for error is a little bit wider than most point guards. He's able to defend multiple positions simply because of his size. Additionally, he works hard on that end. You can tell that he wants to defend. The issue is that he just doesn't really seem to know what he's doing. He eats up space really quickly, jumps passing lanes, is really aggressive, and closes out in the blink of an eye. He can cover a lot of ground really quickly, but he just doesn't know what he's doing yet. So that's really encouraging long term. But short term, it's going to be fascinating to see how his defense continues to grow and if he's able to really take that next step on that end. He gets a little bouncy and a little jumpy defending on ball, which can leave him vulnerable, expose him in the pick and roll on you know quick crossovers in a similar way that he exposes his defenders. They're able to kind of return the favor with him as well. So going forward, what we need to see from Seraph is a little more right-hand finishing. Again, not every time, but a couple, one or two a game would be huge. It'd be ab absolutely astronomical for him. But even if he's able to just kind of maintain this, this insane level of playmaking, of offensive creation, of defensive manipulation, and scoring, his draft stock is going to do nothing but continue to rise. It's only been two games. But it's two games that have built off of a really strong summer in international play and a really intriguing year from him in the previous season. So, Ben Serif, if you're excited about him right now, I cannot wait to see where his stock is at a month from now, two months from now, six months from now, because he looks like the real deal. His combination of size, strength, scoring, and playmaking is really rare. And from the looks of it, it's also very real.